What's up guys? Got something a little bit different to work on today. Something uh, outside of dirt bikes. Well, it's kind of really a dirt bike. This is what hauls my bikes around. But I picked up a new truck a few months ago and there's some stuff I've been wanting to do to it. So why don't we uh, take a look at the truck real quick. So here she is. It is a 2019 Toyota Tacoma. Bought it pretty much exactly as it sits right now. Basically a new truck. It's got like 10,000 miles on it but it already had the lift, which is a six inch BDS lift on it. Got some 20 inch hostile wheels with uh, 35, 12, five tires. Let's see what else is done to it. So the BDS lift is actually a coil over setup up front, which is really nice. This thing rides super good. It also has some airbags in the back just for towing. It's got an onboard compressor bags down there got an onboard compressor so you can air up your tires or air up the bags got a little uh, connection back here if you want to air up your tires and whatnot but I've always wanted one of these trucks absolutely love the look of them the interior everything about it is just perfect also has uh, different seats I believe maybe just covers but yeah they come pretty set up right from the showroom now one thing that really attracted me to this truck was the color it is the cement gray, very unique color. Absolutely love it. Um, the other thing was it was already done up like how I had wanted with the lift and wheels and tires. I believe they also did a different grill and a black roof too. And outside of the truck itself, I ended up saving a boatload of money by buying this one. Found a really good deal on it and got the price down. I ended up saving like 10 to 15 grand if I were to buy a new truck and do all this stuff to it. So pretty hyped on that. Now there's a few things that have been kind of bothering me since I bought the truck. And so today I'm gonna get to work, fix some of this stuff up. Now the first thing is the Speedo. Due to the bigger tires, it's off by about 10%. So I'll need to pull apart the dash to install the Speedo corrector. That'll be pretty nice to have an accurate Speedo and maybe it'll save me from some speeding tickets. And I still do have the car that is a 2016 WRX. So if you guys are interested in buying it, I am selling it really no use having a car and a truck like I said 2016 with a little over 50,000 miles very good shape I kept up on it really good just like I do with my bikes basically flawless I put it all back to stock the only thing aftermarket is a black wrapped roof it's a little dirty right now but yeah very clean car if you guys are interested send me a DM on Instagram I am asking 23,000 for it all right, let's pull this thing in the shop and get working on that speedo corrector. After popping out a few clips and some bolts, we have access to the backside of the Speedo. So what we're installing is the Speedo calibrator. This is from Rough Country. Basically, it goes in between the Speedo and the wiring harness and uh, calibrates the speed for you. So the box says it fits 16 and 17 Tacomas, but actually works on 18 and 19 as well. Now, before you install the calibration box, which we have here, you want to go on Rough Country's website, download the update uh, program here, open the program up, and obviously select the model that you have, and then punch in the stock tire size and the tire size you're going with, and then go up to program unit, click on that, and that will adjust the calibration box for your tire size. So we are good to go, program success. After programming the module, we're just gonna unplug the harness from the back of the Speedo. It's this bigger connector here on the passenger side. That's out. And then the harness for the calibration unit just snaps right into that connector there. There we go. And then the other end of the harness just plugs right into the factory Toyota harness. All right, we're all plugged in. We're gonna tuck the harness and module back behind. 
get the speedo back into place along with all the bezels and we can go test her out. All right, let's get her up to speed and see what the uh, Speedo says compared to the app on my phone. All right, something's going on here. My Speedo says 51, the app on my phone says 48, but I've got the cruise set at 44, so what? <laughs> I don't I don't get it. I'm gonna have to uh, reprogram that module. All right, so I recalibrated the module and the issue was that I didn't punch in the actual tire size. So these are 35s, but when you go and measure them, they are actually uh, 34.5. So I changed that. Now the Speedo is pretty close. It's only a mile an hour off, but unfortunately you can see that I have the cruise set at 40. So the cruise is still off. That must pull speed from a different sensor or different source, but at least my Speedo is correct now. I'll have to uh, contact Rough Country and see if there's anything I can do to correct the cruise, but I got the speedo working good. Now something else that calibrator corrected too is the miles per gallon meter. Before I said I was getting like 14 or 15 and now it says 18 which is pretty solid considering a stock truck gets uh, 20 so 18 or 18 and a half ain't bad with a 6 inch lift and 35s. Pretty happy. We're all back in business ready to go. Now another thing that's been bothering me is the gauge for the air system. It was mounted up right here, but someone broke off the mount before I bought the truck. So I bought a replacement mount. So why don't we get this thing secured back on? We're back in place. Now, hopefully I don't break that thing off. It's kind of in a weird spot. It'd be easier to whack it with your knee. There's really nowhere else to mount that thing on the dash, so it'll have to do. Now, one more thing in the interior that I wanna change out is the mirror. This one does not have the home link setup, so I bought one that does. So I'm gonna swap that out. That way I can have a garage door opener link to it. All right, so I got the mirror installed. I had to run the wiring up through the headliner, down the A-pillar, and down to the fuse box down here, but got her hooked up and she is working good. Sweet. Now there's a few things on the exterior that I'm wanting to clean up. So the plastic on the bed rails, on the rear bumper, the uh, handle there. I'm gonna go through, restore it, or actually shine it up and protect it with the Cerakote trim coat. You guys have seen me use that stuff before. Works really well. Keeps things looking good for many years to come. I'm also gonna do the inner fenders as well. That stuff is kind of an anti-stick coating. So when I go off-roading, all that, all the dirt will just spray right off and I'll be on my way. That'll be pretty nice. So to prep for the trim coat, you want to clean up the plastic with blue Dawn dish soap. Let it dry off in the sun for a couple hours and then bring it inside for it to cool down that plastic has to be perfectly dry and cool to the touch before you coat it so i'm gonna drag the truck outside clean it up and we can get coating while that trim is drying out i've got my eye on something else here the brake drums that's right this truck has brake drums and they're pretty crusty. Well, first off, why the heck did they put drum brakes on this thing? I don't know why. It can't really be that hard to put disc brakes. They seem to work all right, but anyways, I am going to pull the drums off, sandblast them, and powder coat them black.
These are gonna look so much better than that crustiness we had before, although I probably should have used a little flatter black. You can see some of that pitting showing through. Ain't the smoothest, so I ended up using a stone black from Prismatic. But either way, they're gonna look good on the truck, so I'm gonna peel off the masking tape on the backside and get them mounted up. Now, one thing that really chokes when you're working on brakes is when the drum or the rotor gets stuck to the hub with rust. And it looks like on newer vehicles, they put some paper between there to prevent that from happening. Now it can't hurt to throw some anti-seize on there too, just to ensure they don't rust together. I am loving it, so much cleaner. Doesn't look like an old farm truck anymore. So at this point, we are ready to throw down some trim coat on the bumper and all the plastic pieces. So this is the stuff we're using. Probably need two or three packs to do the bumper and fender liners. Now you definitely wanna wear gloves when you're applying it. And try to apply it in a consistent pattern, like go in one direction. You don't wanna swirl it or uh, go like cross directional. Just one direction looks the best. Also, stay far, far away from the paint. You don't wanna get it on the actual paint of the vehicle. And so I think on these, I'm going to actually mask off this whole edge here and all the way down this edge too. Looks like someone had a good time out here. Oh wait, that's just trim coat. So I got everything coated, it all turned out great. Check that out, looks pretty sweet. So I'm gonna give this stuff about an hour to dry before I can just use it like normal. The inner fenders actually turned out really good too. That should help keep all the mud off. I'll keep you guys posted on how that works. You could probably do that on your dirt bike as well. And that would help when you're washing it, all that mud and dirt should just freaking wipe right off. Now I've noticed the trim coat works best on textured plastic like we have here and on the bumper. I could go ahead and do it on the front of the truck here on the grill. This is a little bit smoother of a type plastic. I don't know, it's, sometimes it's hit and miss on the smooth stuff but on the textured plastic, it's a winner. It works really, really good. So I used, let's see, six packages out here, about one package per inner fender. Honestly, the price is pretty reasonable on this stuff. It has come down over the last couple of months. I'd say a package of 10 runs about 25 or $30 on Amazon. So I used about $15 worth of material. I would say that's pretty good for how much I did. Also, when you're all finished up with this stuff, I would leave it outside to kind of air dry. That way it doesn't stink up your garage or shop. Now the difference between this stuff and say like a silicone spray or any type of dressing for plastic is the trim coat is actually gonna last a long time. It is a ceramic coating and actually embeds itself into the plastic. And they say here, guaranteed up to 200 washes. So. Yeah, good stuff. I've had awesome luck with it so far. So last night I ended up having to do a little off-roading to uh, get to a bonfire. There isn't a ton of mud on here, but I figured this would be a good test to see how well that trim coat kept the dirt from sticking. So let's hose it off and see what happens. Now it looks like it didn't completely prevent the dirt from sticking. There's still a little bit, as you can see. I'm sure if you grabbed a brush, it would just wipe right off but definitely made cleaning a bit easier. So I would say it's worth it. So there's some more protection I wanna do on the truck with these wider tires. They kind of fling up some rocks and could chip up the uh, rocker panels here. So I'm gonna get some clear protective film, run it up on the bottom side up to that line, all the way down the cab, on the box, and to the very back. So I'm gonna order up some materials for that right now. Now it's gonna be a couple days before I get that vinyl for the rockers, so I'm just gonna make a separate video on that. And I might even have a few more goodies to bolt on the truck at that point. 
I'm thinking of doing a few more things. I want to do headlights, fog lights, some steps on the side, make it a little easier to get in. It's pretty tall. Maybe a supercharger someday. That's kind of just wishful thinking. But if you guys have any ideas on what I should do with the truck, write them down below in the comments. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you soon.